the protectors of the word podcast. The destruction of our planet is becoming real life. Remember that everyone can make a difference and every action counts. This podcast tells the story of misfit teenagers struggling to band together and help our world through this crisis. Episode number 68, Abby and Phoebe in the Dark. They sat in the tiny chairs, listening. There were faint, muffled sounds from the coffee shop next door. The air was clammy and still. Phoebe nudged Abby's knee with her knee. How long do we have to wait, Abby? Long enough for the crowd and our friends and the police to leave. Long enough to get deserted streets. A long time. But the Watchers will stay. Of course they will. Why give them what they want? I want to trap them. And they're so greedy, they'll fall right into it. Why? Let's get away. I can't. They won't let me go unless I teach them a lesson. I want a place to live in Middletown and not in five years. I want it now. That little cottage in the churchyard would be perfect. The moments crept by. A little light leaked in the front windows from the street beyond the courtyard. Enough for Phoebe to see the fierce glow in Abby's eyes. I just don't see how you're going to manage it. You gave me the clue. I'm going to create an emergency, and Reverend Tuck will rescue me, and give me revenge all at the same time. Tonight? You're going to accomplish all of that tonight? No. Tonight's just the dress rehearsal. Something to set them up. Hopefully tomorrow. So, what do we do tonight? Walk to the haunted house. Why? To let them follow us and get frustrated and want to catch me there. But we'll be so vulnerable. (laughs) They'll think so. But that's my territory. I know it and they don't. But they might attack us and carry you off, Abby. Uh, I don't think so. Certainly not with you there. They'll make my ex-boyfriend Marcus come along and try to keep the threat in the background. Does Marcus have an older brother named Will who drives a green car? That's right. You've seen them. Will is not to be trusted. He's weak and controlled by Bentley and Morphe. You know more than I thought. But you've got to understand how they see things. They cherish absurd hopes that I might join them. Or at least give them information. If they can just get a chance to persuade me, that is. They want me to go with them and talk somewhere voluntarily. Now, what would happen if I go and then don't cooperate in anybody's guess? Abby leaned forward and looked Phoebe in the eye. Here's the truth. This is the situation. A few of them, maybe just two or three, have found out something really important. They know for sure that large rocks containing dreamstone, good-sized crystals, were seen by people here in Middletown and Half Moon at least 10 years before dreamstone was supposedly discovered up in the Northridge Mountains. But they're not exactly sure where those early pieces of dreamstone were found. They're desperate to know absolutely obsessed and they realize that people lie about it and very few knew to start with 
It's a well-kept secret. So they're hoping Marcus can get me to let the truth slip out. It's in their interest to talk to me with as little violence as possible. As long as they think this opportunity is on the horizon, they'll wait. But after that, all bets are off. Abby, this is over my head. All I can see is that we'll have to escape somehow. Of course, through the forest. Once we get in, they're lost. Whoa. I told you it could be hard. Believe me, I've tried all the alternatives, but they just won't leave me alone. And what about tomorrow? Isn't tonight enough? No. I need a more public emergency. Something to attract Reverend Tuck's attention and make them look like fools. I think the weather will be on my side. The storm's coming. They'll stretch out their hand and get burned. You're taking too many risks. Without risk, there's no emergency. <sighs> Look, you don't have to come. I can do it by myself. Besides, Wendy's helping me. Abby, I'm coming. I just wish I understood better. I can tell you're leaving things out. Of course I am. Well, fess up. How are you going to create this public emergency? I told you, Wendy's helping me. To do what? I'm going to fly. What? You're going to fly? They were silent for a long moment. The sweat dripped from their bodies. The air was still, and the dark, deserted toy store was silent, except for a rare truck driving down Bridge Avenue. I shouldn't have told you. How are you going to do that? It's too complicated to explain. Try me. You'll misunderstand and get confused. Please, please tell me. <sighs> okay. Wendy has sort of a pole, a thick carving with a spirit in it. She flies and she's gonna let me try it. Oh my, then it's true? Of course it's true. But why don't other people do that? Wendy is special. You should see the things she can do. I... I can't believe it. So don't believe it. But, you know, Wendy thinks Dreamstone has been around for thousands of years. That explains a lot if you think about it. But flying will be horrible! No one will ever let you alone after that. They'll bring in police, and scientists, and reporters, and God knows what. Don't you see? Even if they did, there'd be nothing there to find. All sorts of strange things happen, and there's nothing to find, and nobody believes it. I'll wait until late dusk, and almost no one will see me. Just the watcher on the house, and one or two others who will be looking. Almost everyone is just like you. They won't believe it. How can you be so sure? Wendy's been doing this for years. It happened since they were people, often in dreams. Phoebe shook her head. This can't be real. I shouldn't ever have mentioned this. Now you'll think I'm crazy and doubt me. It's no fun anymore. I ruined it. Abby gripped her head in the darkness. 
Uh. Neither one dared to speak. Time went by. What do I do now? I have no idea. You saw the giant dreamstone underground. The one they call the mirror? Wendy told me. That's true. So you know where Dreamstone comes from. But we're not supposed to speak of it. Phoebe, did you see anything? About me? Yes. Anything about tonight? Or maybe tomorrow? Maybe. And it's good as far as I can see. Ah, I thought so. I saw it too. Do you like me? Yes. Do you think I'm crazy? No, your world just has more things in it than I've ever seen. But you have an angel. Wendy told me. How does she know? Angels are on Earth as well as in Heaven. I did travel in the stone. I even flew. But that was a dream, wasn't it? Can we try this together? Please? I think we can do it. It's my only chance to have a life. I'm sorry, I don't understand things. But I should tell you this. Guess who helped me in my vision? It was you. You showed me how to follow the old woman. The one they call her. And I'm definitely for certain coming with you, no matter what. Through hell and high water, nothing will stop me. And tomorrow, I'll do the same. Abby put her face in her hands. Her body shook with sobs. Phoebe put her hand on Abby's back and felt her convulsive breathing. Slowly, her body calmed down, and she seemed to sleep. Time went by. Come follow me It's alright you see There's nothing for you to fear Come on over here You can see me through your tears I'll listen to you I hear what you say Go ahead and cry from your heart I'll see you part with me There's always a way I'll see you wherever you are We can't be too near or too far What you found Just walk through the door In my world there's always some more The best is in store The real story goes on and on
Thanks for listening to the Protectors of the Wood podcast. Find all our podcasts, songs, and projects on our website, protectorsofthewood.com. And to all those eco-warriors out there, remember that everyone can make a difference and every action counts.